Greetings adventurer and welcome to how to create. Today I want to talk with you about one shot adventures and take you with me on my own journey to create a one shot for my own group. I hope to give you a good view on my process and thoughts on the matter so you too can create your own one shot adventures. For all of you who don't know, a one-shot is the general term for a roleplay adventure like D&D that is played out over the course of a session. I will share some easy to follow guidelines and tips on how to successfully create and run such an adventure with your own group. In the second part I will present a little quasi one-shot I am currently working on. It will be part of an episodic mini adventure which will be split into effectively a handful of one-shot sessions. Because this is a project I'm working on right now and the episodic nature of it, I thought it would be a great idea to combine these two things and give you a peek into my actual work process when preparing for a session. Today I want to tell you about the rule of five, a really practical and helpful tool to construct a one shot. But first let us go over some basic guidelines that can really make your life easier. A quick side note for all the forever DMs out there, consider to share this video with your players. Maybe they would like to run a one shot themselves and you could actually get to play sometimes. Besides that it would really help me out a lot to get this channel started. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to never miss out a new video on world building and more Dungeons and Dragons related content. And if you feel especially generous, give this video a thumbs up and share your one shot ideas with me in the comments. Go low on world building, you only need enough to set the stage. Spending too much time on world building for a one shot can lead to you overwhelming the players with exposition or unnecessary details. I speak from experience when I say it is really easy to get lost in all the history and details. The best thing is to keep it simple. Give them a clear objective like you have made all preparations and now stand in front of the castle gates. Tonight the monster will pay for what it has done to you and your family. The players immediately know what they have to do and why they are here. It can be really tedious to first walk around aimlessly and try to piece together what you are actually supposed to do. Set a clear and achievable goal for your one shot first and build the rest around that objective. Like kill that bandit, free a prisoner or escape the labyrinth of the archfey that liked you all a bit too much. I don't say you should not use subversion or plot twist, but the players should nonetheless know what their current objective is. Keep in mind there are no long term implications in a one shot that you have to worry about. In a one shot players easily can do stuff that would normally derail a campaign or possibly ruin your carefully crafted campaign setting. However, there is no harm done in a one shot. At the end of the evening it's all gone and the only thing that mattered is the fun you had along the way and the awesome stories you take away with you. The most important guideline is that we as dungeon masters design a dungeon with the fun of the players in mind. If they enjoy the session, you do and if you all had fun, the one shot was a success. A great tip is to use pre-made characters so you know exactly what your characters are capable of. Especially if you never played with these players before or if they are new to the game. But always prepare more options than players so everyone gets to choose. It sucks when you just have to take what's left over. Start with a party already gathered. It can really slow things down to first get everyone together or to have strangers meet in a tavern. The only exception is if you want to have them fight a mimic bar table in the first 5 minutes of the session. This is awesome and heavily encouraged. Starting the one shot in the middle of the action is a great way to kick the adventure off. If you are running a game, remember, rules are not that important, especially not in a one shot. Prepare for what you have planned. But don't be afraid to improvise to keep the flow and the story going. When in doubt decide in favor of the players and don't be afraid to say yes to creative ideas. Succeeding with crazy plans is a really memorable thing and there is no better place to try all the crazy stuff that has no good place in a normal campaign than in a one shot. Always prepare some flexible encounters to fill time if the players are moving on too fast or that you can skip or shorten easily if they need too much time for something else. When you keep your plans flexible it is more easy to adapt to your players and make it fun for everyone. Just keep the important plot points in mind that the players need to know and adapt the rest as you need it. 
A quick tip to speed up combat in general is to give each player only 5 seconds to decide what their character is going to do. This ensures that the combat keeps going. To increase the urgency, count down with your fingers if you are on a table together or use the chat if you play online. From experience, you only have to skip one player once to show that you are serious with it and after that it normally runs smoothly. Their characters also only have a few seconds to think about what's next. The player had all the other players turns for that. Obviously, you should expand that a bit if you play with newer players. You might wonder, is this the rule of 5 he was talking about? No, but it helps you control the pacing of your one shot immensely. You have to wait a little bit longer, we will get there, I promise. The point with crazy ideas is not limited to the players. You can take an otherwise boring dungeon and just spice it up with crazy magic items like the deck of many things or reality altering geometry. Feel free to let your imagination run free. A one shot is a great opportunity to test different concepts or ideas before you use them in an actual campaign. Obviously, really punishing and difficult one shots can be fun too. Think about Dark Souls the one shot. But these are not really the kind of one shots I want to talk about today. If you'd like me to talk about them, write it down in the comments and I might not only make a video about it, but also make a Dark Souls one shot for D&D in the future. The last tip I have for you before I talk about the rule of 5 is one of the golden rules of one shots. Finish in one session. If not planned otherwise, it happens too often that a one shot is started but never finished. You might play with friends which timetables don't line up that often, to introduce new players into the hobby or just for a fun and quick side adventure. Stretching a one shot over multiple sessions can be daunting and it can easily occur that the second session will never take place leaving you and your players without the satisfaction of finishing a fun little short adventure. The goal is to have an awesome night, create memorable moments and just to have fun with friends. There is always the possibility to make a part 2 or even to turn a one shot into a whole campaign if you enjoy the group dynamic, but you always play it safe if you finish at the end of the evening. Now let me tell you of the promised rule of 5. With few exceptions, I always use this rule when I craft one shots. But what does that mean you might ask? 5 is just the perfect number of encounters to put in one session of gameplay. That doesn't mean combat encounters only, but also puzzles, exploration and roleplay encounters. Imagine them like scenes in a movie. You want 5 different areas for the players to interact with. When they leave for the next one, they should have everything they need to progress the story from this encounter. So always make sure the players know what they are supposed to know and include multiple hints all leading in the same direction so it is more likely they find one of these clues on their own or even feel encouraged to make the right conclusion when they find a second clue hinting in the same direction. They haven't talked to the shady looking Draven warrior lady in the tavern? Let them find a note a patron of the tavern has dropped on their way out giving them the same information with a successful perception check, the DC should conveniently be just high enough so only the best role succeeds. Speaking of patrons, if you want to support me and help my channel grow, you can head over to my Patreon and become a supporter there. You would definitely earn a place in my heart and it comes with some cool benefits too. Now let's go into the details regarding the different kinds of possible encounters and how to handle them while running a one shot. Talking to a quest giver or an important NPC or player to player roleplay. Some might say this is the part of the game that is the most fun. But it's also the most difficult to control, especially if you have never played with this constellation of players or even have totally new players in your group. Even then it can be tricky and sometimes a nameless unimportant NPC becomes the most important thing in the universe while your carefully crafted social encounter is done in 5 minutes. This is, for me at least, one of the most fun parts of running a game in general. I love to improvise and to redirect content to reuse it elsewhere. In normal games it is not that bad when it happens, but when you plan to finish the game in one session, this is one of the most critical factors to keep an eye on. Scouting out the area to search for an optimal entrance 
wandering through the town looking for clues or finding their way through a maze-like cave system. Exploration can make the world feel so much larger than it actually is, but it's important to keep it interesting. Think about a few things they can see, smell or hear so that they are really immersed in the exploration process. If it's not interesting or fun, cut it out. There is no place in the pacing of a one-shot for that and we can stretch time in a more fun way. Always make sure that there is something relevant to the story, like a hidden message engraved into the wall of a nearby alley, or is there suddenly a hooded halfling running away after looking scared into the eyes of one player? Great! Now we have a chase scene at our hands and the players have to follow them through the narrow streets of the city. I normally use only one exploration scene in a one-shot. If you are creating a mystery one-shot, that is a whole different story and you could use as many as you like, but I would not go for more than three. Combat is a great way to roll some dice and to have fun, but keep in mind that encounters should feed into the narrative of your one-shot. It is an awesome tool to let the players have some fun with their character's abilities and I would always recommend to have some optional fights at hand to throw in if you need to fill some time. Just keep some flavorful ideas and have good points where to use them. Don't just throw in a random encounter, that just wouldn't feel right. The encounter can be used to emphasize the tone of a one-shot. Facing a necromancer, use a wraith scout or an undead guard and give them a piece of information they have missed in the last scene. Scouting through a jungle? Use native grunts that yield if they take the first hits and offer some helpful advice to send them back on track if the players seem lost. Searching for clues in a crowded city? Use some rabid dogs that were let loose by the antagonist. Obviously the players will only learn that later when they face them and their collection of war dogs directly. Luckily they have dealt with some of the dogs earlier, indicated by some empty cages. More dogs would have definitely been a hard fight. These dogs would have never actually been there, but the players don't know that. Um, by the way, if one of my players is watching, hi! And uh, you know that I would definitely never use such tricks on you. You could have handled the dogs just fine and your smart planning weakened the antagonist. Just to finish my thought on combat encounters though, always tie them back into the story so that the players get the feeling of having discovered a piece of information or being one step closer to defeating the antagonist. A good design trap is like a puzzle. There should be multiple ways to approach them and they should be more than one skill check obstacles. Players should be able to solve them with creativity. Puzzles are an awesome way to give them a challenge where they have to think smart and cannot just roll the dice. Done right, they can spice up your game. Done badly, they can immensely frustrate your players and are only a time sink or a short instantaneous damage number. Throwing in some easy to spot traps that players could easily avoid if they pay attention is a great way to direct their focus to the game and to make them more careful with their surroundings. But these simple traps have to be used sporadically so it doesn't get exhausting or makes too much damage. A one shot is about fun and getting hit in the face every second step is not. If you like to play this kind of punishing and difficult sessions and your players are into it, go for it. But that's not the kind of one-shot we are talking about today. Use skill checks to give the players more insight into the design of the trap and hint at possible solutions instead of just solving the whole thing. In that way they have to be creative, but they can also feel useful if their character have certain skills. As a quick example of how such trap puzzles can look like, I want to share a story from one of my own games. The party ventured down a dungeon. They came to a hallway full of cobwebs and moved cautiously forward, awaiting a spider on the ceiling or behind the next junction. What they didn't suspect was that the floor tiles were loose and tilt down when they stepped on it. A giant spider waiting there for its next meal. They had a fight with the spider and helped the player that has fallen down back up. After inspecting the trap though, they noticed that the spider used its webbing to hold the tiles in place. Now they knew exactly what they had to look out for. One player had the great idea to gather some long benches from the upper floor to use them to get safely across the other traps. This was necessary to get the heavily armored members of the group and the horse across the 3 meter wide traps. Why there was a horse in the confined underground dungeon you might ask. Our proud knight went nowhere without his trusted steed. And yes, this includes cave climbing adventures where the horse had to jump down a shaft, landing on the witch of the group, nearly crushing her by accident. 
But his funny and chaotic adventures are maybe a story for another time. If you design a puzzle or an elaborate trap, always have some clues at hand so you can help your players out if they need it. Just ask a player where their character is standing and regardless of the answer, offer them a certain skill roll. With a convenient DC of course. Like a skill check in history to understand the meaning of the engravings on the wall. If they don't succeed, now the attention is on that engraving and one of the other players can try. Done right, it doesn't feel like you're throwing them a bone, but their character slowly working their way to the solution by solving your carefully placed clues that definitely were always intended to be there. If they solve it too quickly, just use one of your flexible combat encounters, like a guardian waiting behind that door they just opened, rambling about how in 1000 years no one had ever solved that puzzle, but that their adventure ends here. Let them feel awesome for solving that puzzle. It's not meant as a punishment, always remember that. If any of my players are still listening, note that I would never use such trickery. For now, I stop talking about puzzles and traps here. This topic deserves its own video in the future. And I think we all know what we have to look out for in puzzles, if we create our own one-shots. With this we have reached the end of today's video. I originally wanted to make this into one video, but during recording I added more and more to the script and now I have decided to give you the pacing tips and tricks together with the promised one-shot example in part 2. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. You can make my day by giving this video a like and don't forget to subscribe for this channel for part 2 and more D&D and world building related content. If you want to support me to build up my channel and expand the world of Androseal, you can become a supporter on Patreon. Or you can follow me on Instagram, if you'd like to see cool maps with little plot hooks you could use in your own games. I put the links down in the doobly-doo. Your dungeon master for this video was Korok DM, and I hope you join me in the next one.